Hey everybody, Kevin Barnett here inside the Carbide Studio. It's time to talk software. Version 7 of Carbide Create offers a wide variety of new and refined tools. Our topic today is Booleans, or Booleans if you're watching your weight. No matter how you pronounce it, they're powerful design tools. Carbide Create used to offer three options for Booleans. We've recently changed the way these tools function and added a fourth option. Let's go through the four versions of these tools, show you how they can be utilized, and improve your design skills. On the left hand side, when you select two or more objects or groups, Carbide Create will offer you whichever of the Boolean tools could be possibly applied to your selections. From right to left, Subtraction, Intersection, Union, and Weld. The Boolean dialog now offers a preview of each of the potential outcomes. This will help you choose the appropriate tool to produce the look you are trying to achieve. Any one of the four operations can be your first click. That initial selection determines which version of the operations is pre-selected in the Boolean dialog. All of that to say, you're not married to your initial selection. You are now in the preview menu. Here you can select any of the operations. The preview will save you time and increase your understanding of what's available. Two additional boxes let you keep the original vectors as well as group the newly formed vectors after a Boolean is performed. There are situations where this is useful. When we get to intersection, I'll give you a specific example. Subtraction is up first. Flags and shape oko. Black peas and carrots. For our example, we're going with some American muscle from one of the most famous car entrepreneurs in American history, Carol Shelby. We'll put his Cobra inside the stars and stripes. The question always with any design is, what do you want to see? In this case, I want a clean cobra in the middle of the stripes. Here I have two examples of the cobra in the flag. The top is an already completed version. This is where we're trying to get. We'll deal with that in just a second. The bottom contains the original elements that I had blended together for the above section. Let's take a look at that. This is the flag out of our library of art, the American flag, stars and stripes. This is a trace that I brought in via a logo of the Carroll Shelby Cobra. It has a complete outline around it and that's what we're gonna utilize in order to cut it out into the flag. First thing I wanna do is go ahead and group all the stripes that interact with the Cobra. So I'm gonna select them all and group them. Next, I'm gonna select the outline of the Cobra. Now on to the Booleans. It's already showing us with the preview what pieces will remain. Anything in blue will remain. Anything in orange will be taken away. This is looking like a pretty good example of what we want. I don't want to keep the original vectors, but I will group the output so that all these stripes will be a group upon their completion. Punch OK, and there we are. We have a group of stripes. In addition to the stripes, we also have the little pieces that were between each one of these letters. So we have a complete cutout. Now you can decide if you want to keep those individual small pieces or not when it comes to your design. The placement of your Cobra certainly will determine how those stripes are cut as well and how many little pieces you get. In this case, I'm pretty happy with the look. Let's go over to the toolpaths and I'll show you how this comes out with nothing more than an advanced V-carve and then a flag cutout. Let's take a look at our simulation. I'm pretty happy with this look. You can see it's gone ahead and already V-carved inside of each of the letters as well and around those little pieces that we left underneath the R and the A. The inside of the Cobra looks pretty good. This is a flag made quickly and easily with two pieces of art and just one toolpath to create the art, one toolpath to actually cut the piece out. Boolean subtraction, making a winner out of this flag. Next, we move on to Boolean intersection, and the goal in this particular exercise is going to be to take this rook and add into it this brick pattern. This brick pattern I downloaded off the web and went ahead and traced into Carbide Create. Here's the beginning of the rook. Here is the desired look. I'll show you how we got there. I want to go ahead and select all the inner portions of the rook, so I'm going to use layers here. I'm going to select the outside, and I'm going to move the outline of this rook to the outline layer. Move selection to layer. I'm then gonna lock that layer, get rid of our layers menu. Now, when I select with the window this entire area, that outline is not selected. We're not utilizing it. I'm trying to put the brick pattern inside of each of these pieces of the rook, each of these sections. I'm gonna go ahead and group those pieces of the rook. Let's take our pattern and move it over the top of the rook. We'll get it positioned in some way that we're happy with. That looks pretty good. Now, I wanna select both of these groups. So in this case, I can simply run a window and I have selected both groups, the sections of the rook as well as the pattern. You notice that the Boolean menu is up again. Let me go ahead and pre-select intersection and you can see that the blue is gonna maintain the pattern inside of here. Now, what if I just punch okay? 
you can see I do get a nice cutout, but I've lost all the designation of the sections of my rook. So Command Z, let's go ahead and do this again. And let's keep our original vectors. And then also let's group our output as we did last time. This time I hit OK. You can see that the pattern remains and we have also kept the inner portions of our rook. All of these outlines are still here so we could manipulate the individual sections. We now have a rook with that entire pattern. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tool paths and see what this would look like. It is simply a contour of all utilizing a 302 V bit and then a cutout of the rook. It's interesting to be able to add patterns to a lot of shapes you're working with in Carbide Create. Quick and easy way to do it with Booleans. On to Boolean unions. In this case, we're going to create a stacked text sign. So live to love. I know you may not like it, but someone in our office really is excited about these kinds of signs. And the simple fact is these sell. Now the union is going to allow us to have this text over the top of the text behind it. I again have two examples here. The upper is already completed. We'll look at the tool paths in a second. The bottom, I'm going to show you exactly how to create the art. Creating a bounding box and centering all pieces on that box can allow you to relocate text and features easily. This will come in handy in just a moment. Let's go to Boolean Union. If I simply select Boolean Union without keep original vectors or group output and hit OK, I end up with a cutout of both. This is great and a piece we need, but we also need to maintain some of our previous vectors. Command Z to get out. Again, select Boolean Union. Let's keep original vectors. Let's group our output. Now I have our original love. I actually have the original live to underneath here. So I want to get rid of this and I want to keep these two pieces. Here's where the alignment comes in handy. I could realign these two pieces utilizing a node where the pieces intersect. For instance, the corner of the V and the L right here, I could put those two on top of each other. There, it is now snapped together. If you didn't have a box, you now have love over the top of your new live to cutout appropriately positioned. You can do it that way. However, if you went ahead and put a box around it, it's simply two clicks and everything is in the middle. You're welcome to delete that box later if you don't want to use it. In this case, I'm going to use the box as a pocket. Let's go over to our tool paths and create the stack text look. The two vectors being used here are the outside box and the love in the middle. I'm going to go down to four millimeters and it's a top text pocket. The background pocket contains the new live to that we created with the love carved into it, as well as the outside boundary. We go over to simulation and we find that the love is standing on top of the live to. That is exactly the look that we wanted to have. And you'll notice here, inside of the E and inside of the O, the toolpath is able to capture the exact detail of the E underneath. Stack text can be a beautiful look. You can stack text on top of other objects. It doesn't have to be text on text, but stacking one feature on top of another and cutting it to different depths is something you can utilize in your art. Boolean unions adding to your creative possibilities. Finally, let's take a look at the weld command. I would like to produce an outline around these three shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all three. My initial selection will be weld. You'll notice that it's a blue outline around the entirety of these shapes. In this case, I'm gonna keep my original vectors and the output should be a single vector. We've kept our original shapes and we have a complete outline that has welded all the outer portions of these shapes into its own vector. This can be incredibly handy if you wanted to do a complete cutout of something and different layers on the inside. Onto our toolpath simulation, and I've gone ahead and set up a variety of different levels inside this contour shape, as well as the outside cutout. A lot of possibilities here for signs and logos and different levels of looks. Stacking and layering is something that produces really nice results. Boolean subtraction, intersection, union, and weld four tools to help you create your designs. Thanks for being with us here in the Carbide Studio.